Abiola Irio, Farewell to the Scholar Without Borders by Nio Sunder. When serendipity conspires with fate, the result is almost invariably a combination of astonishment and eye-popping bewilderment. This observation provides a painfully perfect script for my own irreal narrative, especially with regard to my interactions with this great scholar and generous enabler in what has now turned out to be his last few weeks on earth. The immediate chapter of this narrative has to do with the dedication of my new book of poems If Only the Road Could Talk, just released in the United States by Africa World Press. In the over 15 years I worked on those poems, it never occurred to me that I was going to dedicate them to anybody. Nor did the thought ever cross my mind in the hectic months leading to the final editing and revision of the galleys. Then, one morning, I woke up with something close to a eureka feeling, voila, I have found a worthy dedicatee for my new book and that person would be none other than Abiola Irio. That decision itself was both curious and complex, for I already had a piece written in his honor in the book of essays I was readying up for publication an essay which had missed the chance to appear in the world in Africa and Africa in the world. Essays in honor of Abiola Irio, a highly valuable fast truth edited with a characteristically comprehensive and provocative introduction by Bio Dungifo. In spite of all this, I woke up with that irrepressible urge to put Irio's name in my new book's dedication page. When I called Kasahun Chico, my publisher, and revealed my new decision, I knew the manuscript was set and ready to go to the printer. But the iReal name did the magic. My publisher had the grace to wait for another two days, during which the following was born. Of songs of the marketplace professor my curious instinct had not run its course. Two weeks after the manuscript had gone to press, I did something that is absolutely out of my character and habit, I leaked the dedication to Professor Irio, thus sabotaging the pleasurable surprise I had planned for him upon a later discovery of the dedication in an already published book. Of course, Irio's response was touchingly grateful. Weeks later, I kept wondering, why? Considering the stated prevailing circumstances, did I undertake to pen a pen for Irio? And, even more perplexing, why did I make sure he read this ahead of its publication? Nothing could have told me about his imminent passing. The last time I saw him and Eka, his lovely wife, it was at the funeral of another great scholar and humanist, Isidore Otkub. And I still remember telling Professor Iriel how fresh and well preserved he looked, and how eloquent his tribute to Ikpo was. Death, our insatiable foe, must have been laughing behind the curtain. I am sad Professor Iriel didn't see my new book before he passed away, but glad that he read my dedication and had a measure of the high regard in which I hold him and the gratitude I owe him as a writer, scholar, and a baroque. 4. Irel's New Horn Press was my first publisher. Unknown to many people, the very title of my first book of poems came from him. I had completed this collection of verses, christened it I Sing of Change, after one of the major poems within its cover and started wondering which major publisher would be foolhardy enough to stake his investment on a timid, yet unknown novice, when the iReal angel walked in literally through the door. Nyai, I understand you have a new poetry manuscript, can I take a look at it? I've been reading your poems in West Africa, the then highly influential London-based news magazine, and I like them. With much trepidation I handed him a bound copy of a collection called I Sing of Change, and he promised to get back to me in about a week. 
But the very next day, Professor Iriel left a handwritten message on my office door, telling me the poems were terrific and asking if I would let Newhorn publish them. Of course, my answer was a resounding affirmative. Two days later, he announced with palpable enthusiasm, I have a new title for your collection, Songs of the Marketplace. I think that sounds more intriguing, and it captures the essence of the entire collection. That name stuck, and the moniker, Poet of the Marketplace was born with Iriel as Francis the Baptist. Thus, Iriel was not only there at the beginning of my literary creative journey, he was vitally instrumental in giving my fledgling dream a name, and shaping the trajectory of a life career. Any wonder then that if only the road, which arrived with my 70th year on Earth, and over three decades since the initial I real magic, kept on insisting that it would not be complete without that dedication to the spirit of the beginning who gave voice and verve to the hawker's ditty in the marketplace of songs. No doubt the god of gratitude has wondrous ways of communing with the spirit of serendipity. Iriel's new horn initiative predated my marketplace experience. First on the new horn poets list was Harry Garb, who Shadows and Dreams, 1982, struck the literary public with its poignant precocity and intensely engaging rendering. Following four years later was Conflicts, debut poetry collection by Mabel Sagun who had already made a name as one of Nigeria's finest short story writers, and much, later, Poems of the Sea by Jean-Baptiste Taddy Laudert, one of Africa's most eloquent poets. Iriel had an overriding passion, to discover, nurture, and promote a new crop of writers after the phenomenal achievements of the Achebe Soyinka Clark Akigbo generation. The new in his horn was both a statement and a promise, a literary journey and cultural investment, with a staunch hope in the future of African writing. There goes Abiola Iriel, the doer and enabler. Admirably cosmopolitan and inspiringly literate, Iriel was a man and scholar constantly reinventing himself and his ideas. An ageless humanist with an astounding combination of youthful energy and the seasoned wisdom that comes with age. We will sorely miss his fertile, encyclopedic mind, his stupendous zest for life, his powerfully resonant voice, his infectious passion for music, wine, and enlightened company. Nyo Sundaribadan, 1989-1990